My first talk is the understanding the next generation of idle power calculation formulas and its implication in the practice. So, so many formulas, we will first go for the understanding about the how these formulas have been evolved, how we can classify it, and how we can utilize these all formulas in our practice. So, in 2000, there was a good visual outcome was the, our main concern and the over a period of time from good to excellent and now it is going to be beyond excellent effective because each and every patient don't want 6-6, they want something, something extra vision from their surgery. So science progressing on the IL power calculation like advancing in the imaging devices, newer IL power calculation formulas, software for the data integrations and some post-operative refraction adjustments. So the last part of the company is majorly, majorly taken care by the artificial intelligence. Advancing in imaging devices will be taken care by the Dr. Arshul. I am just focusing on the newer IL power calculation formulas. Initially, when these IO power calculation formulas were evolving, we were considering as a first generation or second generation, third generation. So in that way, it was increasing. But it was a little bit confusing because only the Gaussian optic was only played in the initial phase. phase. But the, as the ray tracing optics has been evolved and better understanding of the optical part on the ray tracing, these formulas are merging up. And the, lastly, the artificial intelligence also take, took part in that formation. So it becomes now more and more merging. So Dr. Douglas Cook in 2017 come with the uh, classification for that, the historical refraction base or the SRK and SRK2. Nowadays, we are not using it. But the all based on the versions formula, like on the based on the Gaussian optics. And majority of them, at initial phase, it was only thin base lens formulas. And they were considering different variables. Initial all third generation formulas were considering the axial length and the chronometry. Over the period of time, Dr. Higgins come with the concept of NDH chamber depth. So it was a third variable. And the Dr. Barrett come with the two more variable like white to white calculations and the lens thickness calculations. So uh, it becomes a um, uh, usage of more variables. And the Dr. Olade come with the concept of the age of the patient or the reflection of the patient. So more variables have started using in the consideration of the effective lens position calculation. So even though it was more confusing, so Recently, Philomena Ribeiro has classified these formulas in a conceptual classification. So what initially, the, it was a data-driven, and at present scenario also, there is a data-driven. Initially, all the data-driven was on regression-based. Now all our data-driven is on artificial-based, AI-based. So BART, Clark, Fulmante, Hill RBF, LADAR Super Formula, all these formulas are coming up with a artificial intelligence. Now problem with this AI is, because it is uh, only a database, AI do not know about the biology of the eye. AI do not know about the how these optics are working in a, in a regular manner. Suppose your people is dynamic phenomena, so that is not been considered by the AI. So all these factors are not considered in by the AI. So we cannot solely go on the AI because otherwise AI will give us full erroneous results. So we have to control the AI. So we have to use the AI at a certain particular part of the calculations. We cannot use it as a regular uh, solely based on the AI. Another way, our theoretical optics, the consider the optical approach, the Gaussian optics, the thin lens based formula and the thick lens based formula. Thin lens based formula also, again, I divide into two parts. Uh, the older generation, third generation formulas, SRKT, ULADE2, OfferQ, Higgies, and the newer generation formula like CAN, Panacea, Kestoff, OfferQ, STN, VRFG. And the thick lens based formula, which is actually one should go for the thick lens based formulas, there are the Barrett, EVO, Paul DGS, Nizer. So these are the optical approach for the Gaussian optics. And we're considering the ray tracing optics. It can be Aquilex or Olson or CSO. So this is the way we, it has been classified. But it cannot be classified in that way also because there is intermingling. So actually, the classification would be like this. That the thin lens, thin lens, thick lens, and ray tracing, either they are regression incorporation or the AI incorporation. In that way, we have to classify. But even though it is not classifying in a much properly. So again, Dr. Samini come in our help, and he has just recently introduced this new classification. It is, looks like a very large, but it is not very large. I can just explain very briefly. It has again divided into the versions, EI, and the retracing part. The versions, again, thin lens based formula or the thick lens based formula. In thin lens, the old generations, like all AI, third generation formulas of our Heolade, SRKT, and Higgis, and the known AI, which is a newer one. Uh, Castro, Cook 6, Panacea, T2. T2 is a newer version of the SRKT. 
it is a very good formula for the majority of the eyes. The only problem with it, it is on Excel for, uh, format, so you cannot uh, uh, further evolve for that part. And the VRF, which has been recently introduced by the Ukrainians. So these formulas have works a little bit better than the older general formulas. And when we these formulas as incorporated with the AI, then the offer QST, which is recently introduced by the offer, because the offer Q was working very well for the short eyes. Dr. Jesus will take that part, uh, how the, we'll go for the short eyes. But the offer QST, the offer, and the Savini and, uh, and uh, Terini, all this started a new uh, formula that is offer QST. Then the CAN in Australian has also given a very good formula. It's a nearly same like uh, merit formula, but it's a more incorporation of the theoretical optics and the AI and the LADA super formula. So all these thin, uh, thin lines formula which has incorporation of the AI, they works very well at present. The ideal optics, a thick lens based formula on the virgin optics. Non AI is the NIZER 2. It has been recently published two years back. It works very well in the majority of the hands. The only problem is the same like T2 formula, it is also on the Excel sheet, so you are not going to evolve further. The AI based, thick lens based formula, EVO 2.0 and uh, uh, version 2.0 and the Pearl DGS. And now the, all the AI incorporated versions are taking place in the popularity, whether it is a thin lens or the thick lens. Sole AI, as I had uh, told before, we should not rely on the sole AI, but even the Hill RBF is working very well. Carmona has recently introduced, it is now available online, but uh, we don't know about the long-term results. Dallas Sami is still in publish publication. Now we go for the ray tracing one. It is a ray, paraxial or the axial one. Again, there is non AI or AI. Barrett one, O formula, Olson formula, VR, VRFG formula, which is incorporating more and more variables. They are considering eight variables. And Zcalc, Zcalc is a formula which is available only with the JICE. Uh, machines and that works very well as well as even though it is non AI and JAIS come with another AI that is JAIS AI IOL calculator. The last paper they have submitted they are uh, claiming about the 93 to 94 percent over the all range of their uh, eyes but and the problem is still it is not commercial available. The central ray tracing that is a non AI CS and Oculix which is there since uh, seven to eight years in the market. So huge classification. But what at present used by the general population, what we are getting? This study shows that we can obtain up to 90% of the eyes with a prediction error plus or minus 0.5. And it is our aim to remain under plus or minus 0.5. So all these formulas which has been on the left side of the table, all they are giving nearly 85, 88, 90, 91, up to reach up to 90 level, 90%. So why we are lacking? Why we are not giving the 100% even though so many formulas are uh, coming up? The problem is the source of error in magnitude of IL power calculation is effectless position. So at present scenario, the 76% of the problem which is still with the effectless position calculation. And the remaining are the excellent error or keratometry error or other factors. Even though we are increasing the more variables of the keratometry like aspericity, we are considering the keratometric index in the formulas. So we are trying to betterment for the keratometry part. As far as Excel length is concerned, we have some adjustment in the Excel length for the longer eyes. Uh, Dr. Thesis will take that part also, how we are adjusting by the Wong Kong form modification and the newer optical biometry like the segmental biometry. All these are taking, uh, emerging up uh, for the development of the IOL power calculation formulas. The uh, least uh, opened up part is the pupil size. Still, we are not considering the pupil size in IOL power calculation, but it is over the period of time going to be have a uh, boom over the period of time. Once we have achieved the first three criteria to be fulfilled. And the lastly, IOL data factors, and that is very surprising element for us. I, mean, I just briefly go from each of them. The effectless position for the normalized, we know this, that the normalized all formulable is where when there is abnormal eye, there is always a problem in the calculation of effectless position. So all the formulas are using more and more variables like some are using the lens thickness, some are using the white and white. Some are incorporating the more variable like uh, corneal aspericity or posterior anterior ratio. All these formulas are coming up with more and more variables to have a reaching up to 90% or 92% of the success rate over the period in all range of the eyes. So updated instruments, so many optical biometries are available 
Dr. Harsul will take in detail about this updated instrument, but I just briefly saying that two new things which is which is very important for his his excellent measurement is a segmental biometry. I think Dr. Harsul will take in detail. Just I am briefing you that segmental biometry is biometry where we are considering the each and every individual tissue refractive index rather than considering a single refractive index of the eye. So the corneal refractive index, aqueous refractive index, lens refractive index, everything has been incorporated. According to it is a sum of all segments, and that is SOS biometry. And the all other gadgets which are giving a very good corneal power calculation, front cornea or the back cornea, that gives us a to very good total keratometry. The only problem with us is the IOL data factor. Now the problem with ISO, what ISO has recommended, the validity criteria, that is a range which is tolerance range, and tolerance range up to. Uh, less than 15 diopter, it is plus or minus 0.3. Total range from 15 to 25 diopter is plus 0.4. Now we are here fighting for 0.2, 0.3, and the ISO range is so wide that the lens is very difficult to find out the exact lens. And particularly in high hyperopic eyes, where the we are using 30 power, 32 power, the eye tolerance range is up to one diopter. So even though we are using the base formula, we are not getting the exact IOL power. Another problem with this, the physical or geometrical property of IOL is the limit of the, is the limitation, is a property element. So suppose alcohol lens or JNJ lens, they are not giving the details about what is the geometry of the lens. So recently, you know, all our, our stalwarts has given a one publication special report that we, all surgeons, we need to know about the refractive index of the lens. We know the central thickness of the optic. What is the anterior posterior curvature of the IOL? What is the toricity on the front surface? What in the back surface? What is the exact wavefront Z4 correction level, abrasion correction level? What is the exact angulation with the optic? Uh, optical angulation is also different according to the uh, power. Suppose your power is 15, the angulation of the same lens is different. And suppose your power is 25, angulation is different. So all these things we actually need to understand about this IOL power calculation. But we are, we, we are not getting any, any details of any lenses because it is a property of the each and every individual company, and that is a big issue. So IL power does not depend on the surgeons or the formulas. It also has some element we require from the manufacturer also. So these are the basics. Now we go for in the practicality, which formula in 2024? So many formulas are there. So around the world, commonly used formulas are Barrett Universal 2, Ken Formula, Il RBF Calculator, Olson, Offer QST, Three recently introduced is the EVO formula, Pearl DGS, Betal formula. So the last three are the designed to sum up segment biometry, is what I had told about before. But the most important part is, without regular optimization, their performance is not superior than the traditional formulas. So practically, how to incorporate this formula in the practice? So ESR has here come to in our help. So there is a website of ESR as IOL calculator. You put your all the data on this calculator, and that will give you, and they will give you a, each and every individual uh, formulas results. So that is a, known as the web scrapping technology. And they will go to each and every individual for, uh, formulation on the web, available web, and they will give you results accordingly. Second, another good part is that even you can customize your, you can use your own constant for particular formula also. So that is very good part of this. So this is the way it gives the results. And suppose I am getting this result. Now, important part, which formula you will use? Because somebody is giving plus 0.16, some is giving minus 0.12. So you, you have to select the IOL power, whether you want to go for the 23.5 or 24. Let's understand this. We have to develop the strategy to, to choose the ideal IOL power. For that, I am taking an example. This is a myopic patient having a 25.21. is the excellent length. And I put this data in the calculator, and I am giving this result. So this is the 16 diopter here as a valuation in the range of plus 0.17 to plus 0.06. If I will go to 16.5, then it will range from 0.15 to minus 0.26. Because it is a myopic patient, I don't want to have any hyperopic element in this patient. I will definitely go for 16.5. So this is the way you have to customize. Suppose you have your preferential uh, IOL, uh, formula. Suppose I am uh, at present, I would like to go for the upper QST and heel RBF for the short eyes. So I can go for that as a priority, priority for this. So this is the way you can choose your IOL power calculation. 
So these are the latest evidences. Dr. Tejas will go in detail here regarding this. So to start a new optimization of new formulas, because we have now so many formulas there. So you start optimizing your own data, nor normal eyes, long eyes, very long eyes, short eyes. Up to 20 to 30, each data set I, you can optimize all these formulas to our patients. So in summary, for the measurement, use optical biometry to minimize the measurement error. Use the new generation formula for all the patients. Nowadays, use the ACRS calculator and optimize it. Be ready for newer formula to coming up, but keep optimizing your constant, a constant regularly for your favorite formulas. Thanks for your attention. Any questions?